Hey everybody, welcome to the channel. This is Victor of Cars Jubilee. Today we're discussing HDA2 versus HDA. So I've had the pleasure of owning our 2022 limited trim Ionic 5 for the past nine months or so. That comes equipped with HDA2. We've also had the pleasure of owning our 2023 Genesis GV60 Performance, which comes equipped with HDA. I've been able to daily drive both of these cars thankfully because my wife allows us to kind of switch the cars when I ask her to it's a big hassle for her so I'm thankful that she plays along with me for that um, but like I said that allows me the chance to drive these cars back to back on the exact same road conditions at the same time so really I think it's given me a pretty good opportunity to see these two systems back to back in action so the hope today is to answer questions like is HDA2 better than HDA is it worth getting a car that has HDA2 instead of getting a car that has HDA? Let's find out. So I'd like to start it off with three key features that HDA2 has over HDA. The very first feature is auto lane change. The second one is called surrounding vehicle information. And the third one is a feature called driving to one side within the lane. So let's start it with the auto lane change feature. Does it work? Kind of. Do I use it? Absolutely not. And let me explain why with two reasons. The first one is it requires a huge amount of space to execute this auto lane change. Meaning if there's a car remotely close to you front or back in the lane that you're trying to switch to, it's not gonna do that auto lane change. It's gonna wait until it clears out. So I've noticed that in pretty normal driving scenarios, it's just not gonna execute that lane change. So you end up waiting and waiting and waiting until there's literally no one within what feels like a mile of you before it'll execute this lane change. The second reason why I don't like this system or don't find it useful is the fact that it requires steering input. It wants you to have hands on the wheel and it wants you to give it a little bit of steering input before it'll execute this auto lane change. And to me, that completely defeats the purpose of an auto lane change. I would like to just hit the signal and then let it do its thing. But that just doesn't happen with HDA2's auto lane change. It wants you to provide some steering input. It wants hands on the wheel. And to me, that's just, that's not convenient. I would rather do it myself instead of doing that and having to wait for all the cars to space out before it'll do the lane change feature. The second feature is called surrounding vehicle information. Now, this is a pretty cool one. It graphically shows the cars around you in your driver's display and in your heads of display if you have it. However, it's only visible if HDA2 is engaged. So that means you have to be on the highway and you have to have the system engaged but it'll show you real time cars around you in these little boxes or squares or rectangles or whatever you want to call it and they move just like with live traffic my issue here is i just don't find it very useful if anything i find the blind spot warnings much more useful and they are always in your heads up display and they're always in your driver's display assuming you have the driver's assist view pulled up you don't have to have HDA2 engaged to have that feature. And I think that's better. Now, if you have a Tesla, you have what's called live traffic visualization. That thing is always on and it's always working. Uh, no matter if you have the autopilot enabled or disabled, it's always showing you the cars around you. And that's kind of cool, but that's not the case with HDA2. You have to have it on and enabled. Otherwise, you won't see any cars around you and the truth is, having the blind spot warnings, I think, is more useful. So, cool feature, but not so useful. And then the last one is this feature called driving to one side within the lane. 
and according to the manual what happens is if you have HGA2 engaged if you have a truck or a car ahead of you that starts veering into your lane and impedes your lane the system will automatically bump you to the opposite side of your lane you're still staying in your lane but it'll try to create a little bit more space between you and that car ahead now in nine months of ownership I have not once experienced this and I've definitely had cars driving on the lane markings even in my lane while HDA2 is engaged HDA2 just keeps going I've never felt the car bump itself or shift itself over to the other side of the lane it just hasn't happened and in fact I've only seen one time somewhere in the comments where someone said they experienced it they said it worked great um, but personally I haven't experienced it and I haven't really seen or heard anyone else for the most part say they've experienced it either yeah. so I can't comment on a feature that just hasn't worked or hasn't occurred for me so let's do a quick review auto lane change I don't really care for it I don't like it I don't find it useful surrounding vehicle information looks cool but not useful if anything blind spot warnings are more useful and driving to one side within the lane i can't miss something that i've not experienced so all three features in this instance to me personally i find not useful at all so perhaps you're trying to figure out which trim of the ionic 5 to get maybe you're thinking you want the limited trim because it has hda2 and all those extra special features well i would say it's not worth upgrading for if you want the limited trim for other reasons, that could make sense, but don't get it just for HDA2. Maybe you're cross shopping the GV60, but you're disappointed that it's running HDA instead of HDA2. Well, daily driving this car for the past three to four months, there hasn't been a single time that I thought, man, I wish this thing had HDA2. It just hasn't happened. Again, because I don't find any of those features useful. Now I have heard before there's a belief that HDA2 uses more sensors. So the car supposedly has more sensors than my GV60 which is running HDA1. Now looking at the manual, I can't tell exactly which trim has which sensors. For the GV60 clearly the rear sensors are there because that doesn't say if equipped. The front sensors are the ones that I'm not sure about. However, this is the US manual. My performance model is a top spec. So you would think maybe this one does indeed have the front sensors, but I just don't know. Now, if you look at the Ionic 5's manual, that one says rear and front are if equipped. Again, this is the US manual. I have the top spec limited trim. You would hope that I have all those sensors, but the truth is it doesn't really matter because in day-to-day -day driving with HDA2 engaged versus HDA, they drive the same. I haven't noticed any difference and I don't think you will either. Now there is one difference that I've noted between these two cars and I honestly don't know whether it's HGA2 versus HGA or it's just a difference in tuning between the Ionic 5 and the GV60. So what happens is with HGA2 when I'm coming to a stop in traffic it's buttery smooth. It's the smoothest system I've ever experienced. You know imagine you're bringing home your newborn baby for the first time they're asleep in the back and you're coming to a stop that's the kind of braking that it feels like super super gradual to the point where you don't even realize that the car has come to a stop now the gv60 on the other hand is not bad in fact it's still pretty smooth but you definitely feel the brakes grab a little bit or the regen grab a little bit at the very end i'm not really sure why i still feel like it's a tuning difference you know the gv60 is heavier it has bigger wheels it definitely has more aggressive brakes um, but again I just I don't know for sure but I don't think the sensors from HDA2 versus HDA are at play here that just doesn't make too much sense to me so anyways I hope this video helps for those of you that are trying to figure out is HDA2 worth it over HDA because that would then help you figure out which trim you want which car you want and my thought here is HDA2 just isn't really much of an upgrade over HDA, if at all. 
So you should go for whatever trim model you want, whatever car you want. Don't worry about HDA2 versus HDA. They're basically the same system. Now, if you've had experience with both systems as well, feel free to chime in in the comment section below. Let us know, do you notice any differences? Anyways, thanks for watching. See you guys in the next one.